record. Okay, we're recording. Six o'clock. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. A moment of silence as we think about those who've gone before us. Thank you. <clears throat> All right, so we are down our clerk and uh, deputy clerk tonight, so I'm the stand-in. Uh, so I'll be taking notes as well, because I don't have enough to do. Uh, roll call. Uh, let's see here. I don't even have a list, but I'll, that's, that's the only thing. Trustee, that's right, Trustee Bushner. Present. Trustee Lewis. Yes. Trustee O'Malley. Yes. Trustee here. Patton. Here. Trustee Pine. Here. Deputy Mayor Ryan. Here. And I am here as mayor. Also present, Attorney uh, David Engel and Andy Gilchrist. Okay, I'd like to start off this meeting by reading through the resolution <coughs> authorizing acceptance of funds with full reservation of rights. We do have copies here. If anyone did not get a copy of the resolution <coughs> I'm about to read, as well as the agreement and the agenda. <clears throat> Whereas, as a result of the use, discharge, release, and disposal of materials containing uh, perfluoroactanoic acid, PFOA, and other synthetic chemicals referred to as uh, polyfluoroacrylic compounds, PFCs, by St. Cobain Performance Plastic Corporation and Honeywell International, PFOA and other PFCs have been released into the environment in and around the vicinity of the village of Hoosick Falls. And whereas such use, <coughs> discharge, release, and disposal of PFOA and other PFCs have resulted in the presence of PFOA, and other PFCs in the village of Hoosick Falls' water supply system, and whereas the village of Hoosick Falls has suffered and incurred, and will continue to suffer and incur certain damages as a result of such PFOA and PFC contamination, and whereas the village of Hoosick Falls, through its elected officials and retained legal counsel, have duly attempted to resolve legal issues pertaining to such PFOA and PFC contamination, as described herein with representatives of St. Cobain and Honeywell, and whereas such efforts by the village have not been successful in resolving all legal issues pertaining to the above described contamination in and around the village of Hoosick Falls, and whereas the village has nonetheless sought to have St. Cobain and Honeywell pay the village for reimbursement of certain expenses of lost revenue previously incurred by the village as a result of the contamination of the village's water supply system, and has previously made demand therefore, and whereas St. Cobain and Honeywell collectively have previously paid to the village of Hoosick Falls the sum of $525,729.98 for certain expenses previously incurred by the village. And whereas the prior payments by St. Cobain and Honeywell to the village of Hoosick Falls were made with the acknowledgement by St. Cobain and Honeywell that the village would not provide any general release to such companies for such payments, that the acceptance of such payments was not in satisfaction of all amounts claimed by the village to be due and owing from St. Cobain and or Honeywell, and that the village retained, uh, and that the village retained all rights and claims that the village may have relative to future expenses not reimbursed by St. Cobain and or Honeywell, and further that the village retained all rights and claims for all other damages incurred by the village of Hoosick Falls with regard to the above described contamination. And whereas the village of Hoosick Falls acknowledged that St. Cobain and Honeywell likewise reserved all rights with respect to all claims by the village for expenses and other damages not included in the payments to the village of Hoosick Falls, as described herein, and whereas the village continues to deem St. Cobain and Honeywell responsible for additional damages in excess of such prior expenses paid by St. Cobain and Honeywell, and retains the legal rights to pursue recovery of such additional damages from St. Cobain and Honeywell, and whereas the New York State Department of Environmental Conservation approved in April of 2019 a protocol work plan for the granular activated carbon or GAC system on the village water supply system pursuant to which the village performs routine day-to-day -day operation and maintenance of the GAC system and St. Cobain and Honeywell are obligated to reimburse the village for the cost it incurs in connection with such routine operation and maintenance and whereas the village has incurred costs and will incur future costs associated with routine day-to-day -day operation of the GAC system performed by the village at the village water supply system, and whereas St. Cobain and Honeywell have agreed to pay $185,000 in full satisfaction of costs that the village has incurred through April 30th of 2019 in connection with the day-to-day -day routine operation and routine preventative maintenance of the GAC system, and whereas St. Cobain and Honeywell have agreed to make a further payment of $70,000 for the costs to be incurred by the village 
in connection with the day-to-day -day routine operation of the GAC system and routine preventative maintenance from June 1st, 2019 to May 31st, 2020, the fiscal year 2019 to 2020, and whereas St. Corbain and Honeywell and the village agree that such costs described in the two preceding recital clauses do not include, and St. Corbain and Honeywell will separately fund, non-routine sampling of the GAC system and non-routine repairs to the system due to equipment malfunctions, required modifications to the system approved and incorporated into the GAC protocol work plan and carbon changeouts, and whereas the Board of Trustees of the Village of Hoosick Falls hereby determines that it is in the overall public interest and beneficial to the welfare of the Village of Hoosick Falls to accept the offer by St. Cobain and Honeywell to pay to the Village the sums of $185,000 for past costs and $70,000 for costs to be incurred in the fiscal year 2019-20, as described here and above, with the Village retaining all legal rights relative to all costs incurred after fiscal year 2019-20, all costs for non-routine sampling, a non-routine of sampling of the GAC system and non-routine repairs to the system due to equipment malfunctions, required modifications to the system approved and incorporated into the GAC protocol work plan, carbon changeouts, and other damages incurred and to be incurred by the village with respect to the above described contamination, with neither St. Cobain nor Honeywell requesting any release of any legal claims the village may have and the village not providing any such release for such payment. And whereas a reimbursement and payment agreement has been proposed for the payments as described here and above in the form and content as set forth in Exhibit A attached to this resolution, and whereas the Village Board of Trustees has reviewed and duly deliberated on the proposed reimbursement and payment agreement with respect to the payments as described here and above and seek to approve such agreements. Now therefore be it resolved by the Village Board of Trustees of the Village of Hoosick Falls in special session duly convened as follows. One, the Board of Trustees of the Village of Hoosick Falls hereby approves the reimbursement and payment agreement in the form and content as set forth in Exhibit A attached to this resolution, and further hereby authorizes <coughs> the Mayor to execute such agreement on behalf of the Village of Hoosick Falls. I am looking for someone to offer this resolution. I offer. Second. Ben, thank you, and seconded by Brian. Now, uh, as laid out in the agenda, after we've read through this, I'm going to open it up to uh, the people to be heard. Uh, as we do in the past, and as a reminder, we record all the meetings, uh, and they are posted publicly later on YouTube. Uh, we do ask that you say your name and address, and just to get an idea of how many people want to speak so I can figure out a time limit, could just have a general idea on who would like to speak. One? Okay. In that case, we'll go for it, Kevin. Kevin Allard. 5421 State Route 7, Hoosick Falls, New York. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank the board for making, again, this public for everybody to read and review before it gets voted on, and uh, the community really appreciates that. Two, I'd like to thank uh, the media for keeping the spotlight on things and keeping this right out front for us. Uh, we greatly appreciate that. But what I'm disappointed is in the fact that we have to negotiate these items. I mean... The people of Hoosick Falls are drinking remediated water that's coming out of a site that was contaminated by this company. Uh, it's well known, that, and that's what the people of Hoosick Falls are drinking, is remediated water out of the Superfund that was contaminated by a Superfund site. It, it's just kind of sad that we have to negotiate this, and the fact that this company, who's, from what I understand, their net profits per day approach $7 million, that they just don't step up to the plate and do the right thing. I mean, it really is sad, and to me, it looks as though that St. Cobain wants to piggyback on the needs of the village to supply water to our residents as a way to remediate their site, and to me, that's troubling, but I think you guys are doing a great job, Mr. Engel and Mr. Gilchrist, I think you guys are doing a great job, so I thank you. Thank you. I did uh, forget to introduce uh, Dave Engel. Did you want to share any uh, words on this or any... Well, Thoughts and response? I, I, I guess, following up on Kevin's comments, uh, this is a long process, and it's not an easy process. Uh, I've been involved in a lot of water contamination cases and a lot of things of, of various dimensions. This one has some unique aspects to it. Uh, you know, it probably isn't terribly helpful for me to characterize the attitudes of the two companies that we're dealing with here, St. Cobain and Honeywell, um, 
the liability of those companies for the circumstance here in Hoosick is clear and unmistakable. This is an interim agreement, and it is one that makes the village, in essence, whole up to this point and uh, provides reasonable coverage over the next year. There are a lot of moving parts to this whole situation. One, of course, is under the DEC order, there is an alternate water source study, which we are waiting on. And one of the reasons why we are into this interim agreement at this point, together with a tolling agreement pursuant to which we've, which we've been under now for a while and which we're extending to the fall before we initiate legal action, if necessary, is to see what comes out of that DEC process. Because to a very real degree, the information and so on that comes out of that process will be informative as to any major lawsuit that the town pursues against those companies. And our experts tell us that those two things can't be separated from one another. It's our expectation we'll be seeing something or hearing something from that DEC process. Well, they, they indicated sometime around the 1st of July. In DEC time, that might mean we'll see it around Labor Day. Um, <laughs> well, what year? I think this year. Um, the other thing which I think the community should be aware of, and it is a major matter, and I, I don't know that the mayor had anticipated we get into it tonight, but I will note it. And that is, while this is all going on, the landfill, former landfill, is a class two Superfund site. And the state has identified all sorts of potentially <coughs> responsible parties for that landfill. Uh, major among them would be Okutsui, which of course is no longer here in town, but also Honeywell is the successor in interest to Ally. Now the state has also identified other parties including, interestingly enough, St. Gobain. But St. Gobain, through Huron, didn't arrive in town until two years after the landfill closed. The village is also a responsible party in the sense that the village is the owner-operator. But as I have discussed with DEC, the village is not responsible for the problem. And the village's expectation is that other parties, principally Honeywell, will be bearing the lion's share of the costs associated with that. Now that's a big problem, that landfill. And without going into any details, it's a problem whose remedial investigation and remedial efforts are going to cost several millions of dollars. Uh, that's all I'll say about it right now. Uh, the parties have to inform the state by July 5th whether they're going to be involved in that process and try to negotiate a resolution of it. And, you know, to be blunt about it, I've indicated to Honeywell that if they're not in that process, any lawsuit we bring against St. Cobain and Honeywell right now will include a specific cause of action against Honeywell for the landfill. So we'll see what happens uh, on July 5th when everybody has to respond to the state. My expectation is, though, that we will be sitting down with Honeywell and perhaps some other companies between now and the fall and trying to work something out. And uh, I'm not going to guarantee anything, but uh, I would prefer that we take advantage of the DEC process to work out that liability rather than having to add that to the village's lawsuit if we have to bring a lawsuit against St. Cobain and Honeywell. So, you know, that, that's, that, that's, that's sort of the broader picture in which to consider this, and I thought uh, it would be useful to outline that. Thank you. So I think just in summary, the main takeaways are we're getting some more past costs taken care of. Uh, we have some anticipated costs operating and maintaining, doing preventative maintenance on the gap filtration system as well as part of this. We're not signing away any rights. And there are still a lot of moving parts uh, that are going on with the alternate water supply study, with the landfill, uh, that I think will fully inform um, what our end results are and our decisions are. And that's why we're uh, content to be on the tolling agreement for another four or five months. I forget exactly how long it is. Mid-October. Okay. Um, any further discussion? Any discussion from the board? Anyone want to comment on anything? 
I'd like to thank our attorneys for all the work they've been doing. I know that sometimes the public doesn't realize how much work you are doing, and that this is, in the, even though the legal term is a settlement, this is not final, this isn't the end, it's just another step, and it also, I think it's fair to note that the initial settlement that was rejected way back, this third settlement now, if we accept it tonight, totals almost as much as that would have been. Yeah. So the, we've come a long way, we're paying our bills, so thank you guys for your hard work, and I know there's a lot more to come, uh, and we know we appreciate you. Thank you. The, the key difference, of course, of, there's a lot of key difference. Yeah, but <laughs> just, just to remind the community. But we're giving nothing up. We, we, we've given no release. Right. And you know, obviously, we can't go back at them for the same money that they paid for it. That, that's stating the obvious. But there is no release here with respect to, you know, the damage to the water system and what could be decades of costs going forward to the village. Right. So. All right. Uh, in that case, we'll proceed uh, with a roll call vote on the resolution, which in Exhibit A includes the agreement that has been posted on line for everyone to see. Trustee Pine. Yes. Trustee O'Malley. Yes. Trustee Patton. Yes. Trustee Lewis. Yes. Trustee Bushner. Absolutely. Uh, Mayor Allen will be a yes, and Deputy Mayor Ryan. Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, the resolution passes unanimously. Thank you all. Uh, I have one more additional uh, resolution I want to bring up that is unrelated to PFOA and anything. This actually comes from the Woods Book Buyout Program. Uh, I'm going to read the whereas because we just got this finalized today. Uh, and this is the resolution authorizing the mayor to execute purchase contracts on behalf of the village of Hoosick Falls. This is a, as a reminder, this is using the funds from the state to purchase properties to take them down so that we can own those properties and make some changes uh, for flood preventative uh, reasons. Uh, whereas the Village of Hoosick Falls has been awarded a state and municipal facilities program grant or SAM grant in the amount of $1 million in connection with properties impacted by uh, flooding in July of 2017, and whereas such SAM grant is intended to be utilized by the Village to execute property buyouts and related site activities regarding up to 13 flood damaged properties for the purpose of future flood control measures intended to eliminate and or reduce the potential for future flooding conditions on and along the Woods Brook, and whereas a grant agreement titled Hoosick Falls Home Buyout Program, SHARS number 20180126, has been executed by and between the Housing Trust Fund Corporation, a subsidiary of the New York State Housing Finance uh, Agency, and the Village for such property buyout program, and whereas in connection with such same grant and acquisition of such properties, a purchase and sale contract between each property owner and the Village of Hoosick Falls is required, Whereas a form of purchase con contract has been reviewed and approved by the Housing Trust uh, Fund Corporation, a copy of which is attached here to is Exhibit A. And whereas contracts have been negotiated by and between the owners of properties within the Hoosick Falls Home Buyout Program in compliance with the requirements of the grant agreements. And whereas the Village Board of Trustees seeks to authorize the Mayor to execute each uh, such contract on behalf of the Village of Hoosick Falls, Upon finalizing and review by the village attorney, now therefore be it resolved by the village board of trustees of the village of Hoosick Falls in special session, duly convened as follows. One, the village board of trustees hereby authorizes the mayor to execute on behalf of the village of Hoosick Falls a purchase and sale contract by and between the property owners and the village of Hoosick Falls with respect to the same grants awarded to the village of Hoosick Falls as described herein. Upon finalizing and in a form acceptance to the mayor and review by the village attorney. Looking for someone to offer the resolution? Offered. Thank second. you, Brian. And thank you, Bobby, for the second. Uh, Andy, do you want to say anything about this or summarize anything else? No, I think That's the, pretty concise. Yeah, the, the recitals where we're at on the program is a lot of work has been done on each of the <coughs> properties, um, appraisals, site assessments, surveys, title work. Uh, we've sat down with a number of the property owners, um, reviewed purchase terms, had the form of the purchase contract reviewed and approved by the state, and we're at the point of trying to get a number of these contracts executed so that we can proceed to close it. And this would authorize the mayor to execute the purchase contract on behalf of the village. And this contract has already been approved by the state for us to use. Um, and again, this is this is a good news step because we're at the, at the point now where we're entering into contracts. And hopefully, uh, once we have some contracts signed, we're a month or two away from closing on some of these properties. Does um, the uh, village board get to see what these properties are before we actually 
Oh yeah, I can show those to you. Well, I don't. We don't have that. I don't know if we have that out in public about which ones were were, were we targeted have, because we haven't thus far because you're still that negotiating. quite frankly affects the negotiation with each of the property owners mm -hmm. yeah. on a purchase price. And some may or may not want it out there. Correct. Mm -hmm. and yeah. Some. I was just concerned with a couple of the old back taxes and quite a few but much back taxes. Are those properties eligible for any money if they're already in the hole, say thirty or forty thousand well, dollars? Your, your comment is timely because yeah, the this. chance has it. I, I did meet with the county today. Um, we're working through some of the properties do have outstanding taxes, uh, delinquent taxes, and we're going to be looking to further meet with the county and work through those issues. The state is aware of that. The purchase contracts will require those taxes to be addressed. So there's there's a few properties we have to work through, Kevin, on that, but we're trying to make sure that the county is part of that process so that, that the taxes can be addressed. Okay. When it comes to <coughs> demolition, are we waiting until we have closed on all, or are we doing it in chunks to approve demolition? Will they be demolished Collectively or on a one-on-one -on -one basis, what what's the plan? We have this? we have funds set aside and budgeted for demo. Mm -hmm. For um, I mean, we basically put out a bunch of different proposals based on how many properties we end up getting. We're not going to know, know until we get all of them. Um, but we have we have the time to make that decision. Right. Um, we're not in a rush. It may it's likely going to be better if we can do five or six at once put out to bid right. instead of just you know one at a time here one at a time there just similar to how we took down unsafe structures recently yep. one then they bid on collectively and okay yeah that right. would that would be the way to go and i think that um as this unfolds we, we may get a few at a time maybe a few later after that so mm -hmm. those will be decisions we make good do we have a minimum maximum number of uh Homes that we could be looking at. There's a there's a list of I think 13 specific ones that were targeted that the state agreed we can we can uh, target, but it's basically until we run out of funds, yeah, or until I mean yeah. if you know if half of them say no and half of them say yes and then that's done. Then we we get right. those and that's yeah. Okay. So it's basically is it? I want to make it sound, but is it first come first serve? In a or sense, yes. In a, I mean, it, it's out. until the money yeah. runs out. Okay, so yeah. people know they have to move on it if they're gonna if yep. they're actually gonna do yep. it. And you've already spoken to all of the. All of the property owners? Uh, we reached out to all. Uh, okay. We've spoken with several times anybody who got back to us with interest. Okay. Yeah. Great. Thank so you. So right now there's five or six. What's that? Right now there's five or six. The, the, the program was set I can't remember exactly. I think it's, it's a little higher than that. It's purely voluntary. So the yeah. first thing that the village did was send a notice to the 13 targeted properties, mm -hmm. see if they had interest in participating in the program. Many did. And just so you're aware, the first step was to get a property access agreement with those properties because we had to do some investigation uh, on the properties. Um, not all 13 did, uh, although a significant number did. Mm -hmm. So we have a lot of information, a lot of parcels. Um, one of the things that was done was an appraisal, and the mayor and I had the opportunity to sit down with most of the property owners that uh, agreed to participate in the program. Uh, many of them have moved forward and are reviewing purchase contracts now. <coughs> Some dropped out because they, at, at the point of seeing the appraisal, just didn't want to continue to participate, which they had every right to do. So uh, it's not 13 properties, but there's a significant number of properties. And again, yeah. I do think the mayor looked at this, and there were certain target properties that were more critical yeah. for flood prevention purposes than others. Mm -hmm. So kind of focusing on those properties. Yep. Them. Did we, the people that aren't participating, did we get a negative response from them as in, no, I'm not interested, or did we get just nothing back from anybody? Like, did somebody maybe miss out on this? Um, there are a couple that are like owned by the bank that are in that sort of wishy-washy okay. foreclosure area that they never got back to us. <laughs> um, you know, there are certain limits to what we can do based on the language of the contracts. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, if, if they see what our asking price is and realize that we can't go any higher, yeah, they just no, say, no I, thanks. I just, I, I just yeah. didn't want to, like, overlook somebody who threw out the mail or... No, all no, the, all, all the parcels that we're interested in get, taking care of have been contacted. Oh, yes. So yeah. that's, oh, yeah. that's, yeah. that's all. That's yeah. all, right? Okay. Yep. <clears throat> all right. Any other questions? Okay. We have the uh, resolution uh, already offered and seconded. We will do this again with the roll call votes. <clears throat> Trustee Pine? Yes. Trustee O'Malley. Yes. Trustee Patton. Yes. Trustee Lewis. Yes.
Trustee Bushner. Yes. Uh, Mayor Allen is a yes, and Trustee, I'm uh, sorry, Deputy Mayor Ryan. Yes. All right, passes uh, unanimously. Thank you. Uh, at this point, um, I'd like to entertain a motion to enter into executive session for the purpose of discussing pending and potential litigation. Motion. motion. Second. I'll give that to uh, Vanessa is there and Ben. Will we be making a decision after? Um, there is the not. possibility of doing business after. This shouldn't be a very long executive session, but I just want to make sure it's out there. Or for Ben, it's a six-hour executive session. Just kidding. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Carries, we enter into executive session at 625. We'll move over to the office. Okay, it is 636. I'm looking for a motion to uh, exit and ex executive session. Motion. Second. Vanessa and Craig, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? We left executive session at 636. Um, attorney, God, I feel like Bobby's running. Angle, I, <laughs> would you, uh, what, wow. What we're looking for is a resolution authorizing our law firm to respond to DEC, indicating that the village will participate in the negotiation process on dealing with the landfill as a hazardous waste site. And as I've indicated earlier, we will do so on the condition that those who are responsible for the contamination, principally Honeywell and or um, Oak Mitsui, also participate. Uh, so we will craft a response to that effect and then proceed presumably into negotiations with the agency and whoever else is there uh, over the course of the next number of months. We're going to make a motion for council to respond to DEC. Uh, regarding negotiations regarding the landfill, the conditions that those responsible for the contamination there are also participating. Did I get all the words? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> who, who, uh, I second that. Thank you. Can you read that one more time? <laughs> <laughs> uh huh. Go uh, for it. Make a motion that council respond to DEC's request for negotiations. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> Come on, Granny. I'm sorry, I'm not Marie, all right? The council respond to <laughs> DEC's request, request for negotiations mm -hmm. with oh, regarding the landfill, sorry. Mm -hmm. With the condition that those responsible for the contamination also participate. Got it. Thanks. Further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Uh, unless anyone else has anything to bring to the uh, to the board, I'm looking for a motion to answer the phone. I mean, <laughs> motion to adjourn. Motion. Second. Uh, thank you, Ben and Craig. Yes, All in favor? You, Aye. Aye. Opposed? <laughs> carries. Whoa. Today's date, uh, July, uh, June? June 19th. 19th. Uh, ended at 6.39, I have on my, on my oh, device. That's, that's all it's Bobby Ryan asked. That's what I said. It's Bobby. Bobby's running.